Good morning, cadets. Morning, sir. Can you guys hear me out there? All right, parents, staff, welcome. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Colonel John O'Neill. I am the Missouri Wing Commander. I'm in charge of all civil air patrol of the state of Missouri. And this is one of our major activities of the year, is the cadet encampment. And we had a handful of cadets start out last week. This is actually the largest cadet encampment in Missouri wing memory. I won't say ever, but in, in the history that we know of, we have ever had this many cadets and staff members in one location for one week. And to see them standing out there today is actually a tribute to the staff and to their discipline. So thank you cadets for doing such a great job this week. And thank you senior staff and cadet staff for keeping them safe and giving them good training throughout the week. So great job staff. Parents, thank you very much for letting us borrow your, your children for a week. Hopefully we're giving them back to you in a better state than, they, than when we got them. Um, but Colonel, Colonel Sander, wherever he went, told you how to, how to let us know if that didn't happen and we'll try to do what we can to fix it. But I can pretty much guarantee they're better than they were a week ago. And you're gonna notice it right off. Cadets, did you have a good time this week? For those of you who don't know what they've been doing, they have been through a confidence course. They've rappelled off of a 40-foot tower, I think it is. They actually take, take a back. They did two confidence courses. And they've been learning all about what it is to be in the military. They've been learning about aerospace. Some of them actually got to fly earlier this week. We were hoping to get them all to fly, but one of the things that we do when we fly is we check the weather and the weather didn't cooperate quite so much. Um, but a handful of them got to fly. Those who didn't get to fly, you guys need to go back to your squadrons and tell them, I want to fly, I didn't get to fly in the campus. And go flying, it's fun. But they had a great time this week. And hopefully they're telling you all sorts of neat stories about it. Colonel Sander led his, uh, or uh, mentioned a few minutes ago, that this, his first encampment was a couple of years ago. Last night he let it slip that it was 30 years ago for Colonel Sander. This year, actually next month in August, marks the 40th anniversary of my first encampment when I was uh, about that tall, little tiny 12 year old cadet. Like a lot of you out there. So 40 years ago I was standing out there where you are. In 40 years, hopefully you're standing here where I am. I challenge you to that. Some of you may be a little less than 40 years, maybe 35. <laughs> but this is the start of something big for all of the cadets. And I really, really want to congratulate you all, both staff and students, on a successful encampment. Congratulations. Be proud of what you've accomplished. You've done a great thing this week. Without further ado, can we do young pastor here?
Ladies and gentlemen, I present you the 2017 Summer Encampment.
They all got here fresh. Some of them only have been in civil patrol, set a month. Now, they all walk off this great field better, wiser, more motivated. They've all made at least 16 to 20 best friends for life. And hopefully, some of them will return to carry on the missions of the 9th Cadet Training Group as set and the forebears before them. As I look out onto this field of the, of the cadets, I see the future and the makings of the 10th Cadet Training Group for 2018. Group on my command. And Two thousand seventeen, Missouri Encampment, ninth to that train group. You are now graduating. So, ninth to that train group, listen up. When I give the command to fall out, you will have five minutes to come up to this area and greet the family that have missed you and undoubtedly you have missed them for the last week. And then an announcement will be made to fall into the vehicles. You will report to building 1288. You will secure your certificate, your encampment ribbon, and your commemorative challenge point. The story of the challenge point. The military challenge point has its humble beginnings all the way back to the times of the Roman Empire and Caesar, where Roman troops would get paid in a similar coin called a soja. That is where the term soldier comes from. Well, fast forward to World War II. Coins were made in case you got lost or captured, how you can identify yourself as not being enemy when you return to friendly forces. And it became a tradition once you earned your challenge point, you went to a function or perhaps back on Saluna Bar, everyone would do a, a, a coin check. And the members who did not have their coins were either, you know, counseled a bit or they had to buy a round of drinks, whether it was leaded or unleaded. That tradition continues today. So, any time from this point forward, once your coin has been issued, if another member of the 9th CTG coin checks you, you have to present your coin to them. If you don't have it on you, then there's some explaining to do. Like I promise you this, you won't have to buy a round of drinks. That's a lot of Coke and root beer and holders. So, but be proud of your coin. Everyone here has earned it. You've earned your encampment ribbon, and now you have earned the right to complete your Mitchell Award. You have earned the right when you join the armed forces, if that's your choice, you will be advanced into advanced ranks because they recognize once you got that General Billy Mitchell Award, a big part of that was having attended a week at an encampment at a military installation and living the life as a military member, which puts you in an advanced position to lead in that military branch. So, yes. All right. Bye. There's been there's been a, a slight stand. Because everybody was trying to get ready for the break this morning, some of the barracks did not pass the inspection. No one is allowed to leave until those barracks are clean. There will be no processing until we clear the barracks, because it's not fair for one or two people to come up and clean everyone else's message. So, in an early fashion, we're going to report back to 1288, and work details will be assigned 
in principle to, to Bolvitsky to sit back to their own barracks to assist in getting it ready, cleaning it, and getting it back in order so you can turn these facilities back over to the National Guard or hosts. And then, once they've been released, then they'll deal with our process. Parents, we ask that you stay around building 1288, or if you want to wait for your pets somewhere else, you're welcome to visit our base exchange or the museum down South Dakota Avenue.